very, very successful in this little pool until suddenly geological conditions changed, climate changed, and the pool dried up. Now these sophisticated descendants didn't find out how to go back to the simplicity of the little limpet. And they died out, they died out. One can say that uh, Darwin didn't wear a watch. He understood evolution and he understood the survival of the fittest. This concept has a, has a huge impact in the way we live today. But since he didn't wear a watch, he didn't take into account the time factor. Who is successful for a moment in a short span of time is different from he who is successful in a long period of time. Land conversion is accelerating and spreading to more and more marginal land. Often this leads to dust holes, which is collapse of the soil. Desertification, which is formation of desert, is widespread in Asia and Africa. For example, Nigeria is losing 351,000 hectares per year. Iran lost 124 villages buried under sand in 2002. Afghanistan has recently lost 100 villages. China is losing land to desert at the rate of 3,600 square kilometers per year. That's square kilometers per year. Mexico and Brazil are losing to desertification. Deforestation is rampant in Brazil, Madagascar, Mozambique, Malawi, the Philippines, Burma, and Russia. And Haiti is a basket case. You're seeing many, many of the great rivers of the world no longer reach the sea or at the very best are reduced to a trickle in the dry season. Many inland seas and lakes are drying up, such as Lake Chad. And you can see some picture, satellite pictures of Lake Chad. A little bit of blue in the 1990s is all the water that's left. Even the Sea of Galilee, apparently in many parts of where the Sea of Galilee used to be, it's now possible to cross the Sea of Galilee without miraculous powers. Underground aquifers are falling all over the world at the rate of one to six uh, meters per year. For example, in the Hebei province in China, which surrounds Beijing, they have lost 969 out of 1,052 of their lakes. They've dried up. That's 92%. Beijing is now having to sink bores 1,000 meters down to try to reach water, and they're having to pump water 1,500 kilometers from the Yangtze River just to keep going. So we expect millions of water refugees in the coming decades. We have put more nitrogen fertilizer on the soil since 1985 than ever in all of human history prior to that time. The world is losing about 6% of its forests per decade. New Zealand lost 37,600 hectares um, to agricultural production last year, which is three times the area we currently have under grapes and three times the area we currently have a kiwi fruit. So much as we might fancy ourselves, we are in fact no better than anybody else. However, in contrast, South Korea has managed to reforest its denuded landscape. After the Korean War, there was not a tree standing. South Korea has reinstated 65% of their forest cover with a massive consequent reduction in floods and landslides. So good old South Korea. And that's in marked contrast to what's happening in North Korea. After uh, flooding in the Yangtze River Basin caused $30 billion worth of damage in August 1998, China realized belatedly that the value of their trees as flood protection was far greater than their value as timber. Nigeria and the Philippines have now lost their forests and they are importers of wood. Can you imagine that in my own cultural knowledge of Nigeria and the Philippines? I see them as forested countries and they are now net importers of wood. Remember that forests make their own rain.
because forests trap three quarters of the rainfall in their sort of humus and undergrowth, and that water is then available for evaporation and transpiration further inland. When you denude the land of forest cover, 75% of the water just runs straight back to sea as runoff, and therefore that water is not available. So it is absolutely true that forests make their own rain. Loss of forests causes droughts and floods. Loss of topsoil causes deteriorating cropland and rangeland. It causes dust bowls and ultimately desertification, especially in Asia and Africa, which house 73% of the world's um, population. Desertification in China has caused the abandonment or partial abandonment of 24,000 villages, displacing tens of millions of people. pulled out of the Kyoto Agreement because they said that compliance would cost it between 13 and 397 billion dollars which they deemed was too much. However, if atmospheric pollution doubles on prehistoric levels, pre-industrial levels, the Americans can expect to lose 70 billion dollars every year and that's expected by 2050, of which health costs alone will be 16 billion dollar a year. For the Americans, the net cost either of complying or not complying with Kyoto would be very, very high. The compliance cost represents 1% of the US's current GDP. Now, after the Boxing Day tsunami, when mangroves had been spared, they provided protection against the ravages of the tsunami. In the distant past, New Orleans wetlands provided a natural barrier to hurricanes Unfortunately, they've all been um, bulldozed away by development. And so Hurricane Katrina last year cost $200 billion worth of damage so far, which is seven times higher than any previous storm in history. 